Hi, and welcome to another episode of the Michael Yardney Podcast. Today I'm going to share well, what I believe are two interesting topics with you. The concept for the first part of my chat came about from an email I received from a client. and She was confused. She was wondering, in a market that's buzzing with self-proclaimed property investment gurus, how do you differentiate between genuine expertise and Let's call it fortuitous luck. Now, we live in an era where overnight success stories often mask the hard realities of investing. And in my mind, understanding the difference between these two things could be the difference between sustainable success for you as an investor and an unfortunate mishap. Now, regular listeners know I've got a guest on most of my shows, but every now and then I like to have a chat, just you and me, where I can share my thoughts. And that's what's going to happen today as I give you my perspective on these overnight property millionaires. And then I'm going to share with you quite a long mindset message, but I believe this is a really important one. Now, if you want to stand out from the crowd and be a successful property investor or a successful entrepreneur or whatever area of success you're looking for, then this session I'm going to share with you today will be for you. But please be warned, it's actually a little heavy. And as you listen to it, you're probably going to think, oh, Michael's gone all metaphysical on me. But please persist and listen to my thoughts. Now, because if I thought I could help you become more successful by showing you the next property hotspot or another finance trick, that's what I'd be discussing. But instead, I'm going to let you into, I'd hate using the word secret, but the secret of how you can get more success by changing. Changing what, you might think? Well, listen in and you'll find out. Welcome to the Michael Yardney Podcast, where twice each week you will learn a number of new ideas regarding success, property investment, and money in around 30 minutes. Our show is brought to you by Metropole, who specialize in helping you grow, protect, and pass on your wealth through strategic property and wealth advice. Now, here's your host, Michael Yardney, Australia's authority in wealth creation through property, who has been voted one of Australia's top 50 most influential thought leaders. Following the exhilarating thrill of the property boom we experienced in 2021, I've noticed there's been a new breed of self-proclaimed property investment experts that have emerged. Now, these individuals, they reaped substantial rewards during the boom, and they're now gloating about their seemingly impeccable judgment, about their expertise, and they're offering to sell you the secrets of their success. Sometimes it's through courses, sometimes it's by acting as your advocate, as your buyer's agent. But beware, all that glitters isn't gold. Now, the reason I'm having this chat with you is only a couple of days ago I was approached by a client of Metropole who bought a great apartment in Sydney's inner west, and while it had gone up in value considerably, she wondered whether she'd done the right thing, because she'd just watched a video on YouTube, she gave me a link to it, and it was about a so-called young property guru who bought multiple properties in the last couple of years, and he was now ready to retire at the age of 30. In fact, she told me that she remembered Warren Buffett's quote. She actually put an email that said, wealth is the transfer of money from the impatient to the patient. But she still couldn't help wondering, maybe she was following the wrong path. Now, I can understand where she's coming from. She was wondering, are these individuals truly astute investors or merely fortunate outliers riding on the coattails of what was the surging market? I explained to her that this new breed of get-rich-quick experts are really just selling tickets to see unicorns because there's no secrets to getting rich quickly. Now, it reminded me of a warning I read a while ago. Look, I think it was back in 2006, Howard Marks of Oak Tree Capital warned of the dangers of attributing too much value to a single success story in a memo that he wrote called Risk. He noted that during boom times, those who took the most risk often saw the greatest returns. But were they shrewd or simply aggressive and consequently bailed out by favourable conditions? The famous Nassim Nicholas Taleb calls such people lucky idiots. And in the short term, it's actually hard to differentiate them from skilled investors. Now, Warren Buffett, the Oracle of Omaha, gave a similar warning in a famed article in 1984 called The Super Investors of Graham and Doddsville. Now, I want to share this with you because it's an illustrative story. He basically said, let's give each of America's 225 million people, that was how many people were around in America at that time, $1. We'll give them a coin and let's start a coin flipping contest. 
well, each of all the Americans have that one dollar. Ten days into the contest, he said 220,000 people would have consistently called the coin correctly. Each of them would have made $1,000. Of course, human nature being what it is, it's likely these successful people had uh, inflated egos, inflated self-perceptions, thought they were good and would go around telling people, look how good I am at picking coin costs. Then, another 10 days into it, there'd be 215 individuals remaining and they'd have each won a million dollars. This small group is likely to get overly proud about their technique, possibly even authoring books like How I Turned a Dollar into a Million Dollars in 20 Days Working 30 Seconds Each Morning. I guess Warren Buffett's story was to remind us that even if the same experiment was conducted with 225 million orangutans, the result would be much the same. 215 egotistical orangutans with 20 straight winning flips. Did that make them skilled? No, it means they were lucky. Now, this analogy, as humorous as may sound, applies aptly to the property scenario. Now, there are probably more than 215 of these lucky idiots or egotistical orangutans boasting about how they've made their fortunes from small investments and they're selling the narrative that you too can replicate their success with ease. It's not just in the field of property, is it? You'll find them touting their prowess across digital platforms from Twitter to YouTube to Instagram – and somehow or other, each of these individuals has got, I don't know, a following of 215,000 people exponentially spreading their get-rich-quick rhetoric. But you'll also remember Warren Buffett once saying, when the tide goes out, you discover who's swimming naked. Now, the danger of such so-called experts can't be overstated. Not only are they misguiding novice investors with their anecdotes of easy wealth accumulation, but they also influence their massive following to adopt this distorted narrative. It's important to remember Sir John Templeton's cautionary words. He said, the foremost dangerous words in investing are, this time it's different. This time it's different. This time indeed is not any different. And the rules of prudence, diligence and rational decision making in any investment still apply. Our markets are doing well at the moment, but one day these markets are going to cool and the tide will retreat and once again, one day, there'll be lots of people swimming naked. Individuals who lack the sustainable strategy, a proven framework and what they've done is expose themselves to the downturns of the market. So to avoid this fate, in my opinion, it's crucial to differentiate between the genuinely skilled investors and those who are simply on a lucky streak. Now, remember, expertise comes from experience, study and consistent success over time, not from a single fortunate instance. So how do you know when you're an expert? I believe it's when you can get continuous, repeatable results over and over again in all sorts of markets. So as you chart your investment journey, my recommendation is proceed with caution. Don't fall for those intoxicating tales of easy riches, nor should you take advice from those whose success is more attributable to luck than to genuine skill. Rather, rely on proven investment principles, thorough research and sound advice from experienced investors with a track record of consistent success. And there are a number of great advisors out there Sure, I'd love you to work with our team at Metropole, but I was just saying be careful who you listen to because there are other good ones out there as well. But I also believe to be successful, you actually need to plan. Now, our property markets are going to create significant wealth for many Australians again. But only recently I read an updated statistic from the AHRUI who a number of years ago, wrote that 50% of those who got into property investment sold up, and the most recent statistics have showed nothing has changed. In other words, half of those who bought an investment property didn't hold them for more than five years. And those who stay in the game, 92% never get past their first or second property. And that's because wealth doesn't just happen. And it's not as easy as this new breed of get-rich-quick gurus are suggesting. It's the result of a well-executed plan. I guess planning is bringing your future into the present so you can do something about it now. Now, just to make things clear, buying an investment property is not a strategy. It's not a plan. 
It's important to start with the end game in mind and understand what you need, what you want, when you want to achieve it, what your risk profile is, and then build a plan, a strategy to get there using proven frameworks, time-tested frameworks, because the property you're eventually going to buy will be the physical manifestation of a whole lot of decisions you're going to need to make. You're going to need to make them in the right order. You've heard me say it before, property investment's a process, not an event. So whether you're a beginner looking for a time-tested property investment strategy or an established investor, maybe you're stuck, maybe you're just wanting a subjective opinion about your current portfolio, I suggest you allow my team at Metropole to build you a personalised, customised, strategic plan. Now, we're much more than just another buyer's agent at Metropole. We help our clients safely build substantial property portfolios and create intergenerational wealth, but it all starts by building that customised, personalised plan for them. You see, when you've got a property plan, you're more likely to achieve your final goals, but you're also less likely to get caught up in the hype in the media or by the get-rich-quick schemes because you're going to know what you should do and just as importantly what you shouldn't do because your plan is going to help you define your goals. They're going to actually see whether they're really realistic, especially for your time frame. And if you've already got a portfolio, it'll help you measure your progress towards your goals, whether your property portfolio is working for you or maybe you're working for it. We'll find ways to maximise your wealth creation through property But just as I said a moment ago, identify risks you hadn't thought of. And the real benefit is you're going to be able to grow your wealth through property faster and more safely than the average investor. So why not go to metropole.com.au? I'll leave you a link in the show notes and have a chat with my team and allow us to help you build a plan. Oh, by the way, plans are very detailed. There's lots of people saying, oh, we're going to give you a property strategy. This is different. It's detailed. It's got various options because there's lots of ways of getting to where you want to get to. If you're going to drive from Melbourne to Sydney, you could go up the Hume Highway, the short way. You could go the long scenic route. You may want to stop off and rest for a while. It may be just like in your property plan. You may want to stop off and have a baby or go overseas or or change your plans along the way. So there's not one simple way of getting there. We've got to work out what works for you, build an asset accumulation strategy, a manufacturing growth strategy, a rental growth strategy, an asset protection and tax minimization strategy. That's critical to avoid the risks. A large part of planning is having a finance strategy. You've heard me say it before, property investment's a game of finance with some houses thrown in the middle. And then eventually we'll help you understand how you can live off your property portfolio. So go to metropole.com.au and learn about our strategic planning services and why not have a chat about your options with us. Now here's Michael's mindset message. Remember, a change in your thinking will lead to a change in your life. You're probably listening to this podcast because you're looking for more success in life, whether it's in money, within your business, with property investment. That's why people tend to come here. And I've found that most property investors won't change their level of wealth until they themselves change. Now, rather than disagree with me, please humor me for a moment and listen on, because I think I've got a particularly important message to give you in today's session. You see, sometimes we love change and sometimes we hate it. In fact, some of us love to change and others fear it. So why is it so difficult for many of us to change? It's because change makes us move out of our comfort zone. It takes courage to leave something familiar, something that you're comfortable with and to try something new. In fact, one of the jobs of our subconscious mind is survival, to protect us. It likes to keep things the same, preferring safety and security over the untested and the unproven. Haven't we heard people say before, better the devil you know than the devil you don't know? Well, we tend to believe that if we stick with what we know, with what we're familiar with, then we won't get hurt. But the problem is, in terms of wealth creation, it's not what we know that's holding many of us back. It's what we think we know that isn't so that's holding us back. Now, I know you're used to listening to my thoughts on the podcast and reading my thoughts on property in these uh, podcasts and blogs, but for a moment, I'd like to share my thoughts on wealth creation instead, because really that's what you're wanting when you're coming here to learn about property. You're really wanting to get the results and the certainty and the direction by having a 
substantial asset base of properties. That's really not property that you're after. So I'd like for a moment to discuss why many Australians are not as far advanced with their wealth creation as they'd like to be. And I'm not talking about the external circumstances and the recession and COVID and all the other things. They're external excuses. You see, most Australians are not as successful as they'd like to be, haven't developed the financial freedom they'd like to be, yet they continue to do the same things over and over, hoping somehow things will be different. Think about it. If you're going to keep doing the things you always did, you're going to keep getting the results you've always got. If what you've been looking for is where you're looking, chances are you'd already have found it. Doing more of the same, even harder, even longer, isn't usually the answer. Being willing to change, though, will create better results. However, the good news is you can have more. You can become more successful because you personally can change. You can become more. So what is it that holds most of us back? And many years ago, I coined the term and actually trademarked it, the wealth operating system, your financial blueprint, the programming you received as a child. It was initially described by Wallace Wattles in The Science of Getting Rich. I know it was almost a century ago. And more recently by T. Harv Eker in his great book, Secrets of the Millionaire Minds. And they said, your thoughts lead to your feelings. Your feelings lead to your actions and your actions determine your results. So it's no coincidence that your inner world creates your outer world. The programming you received as a child, that leads to your thoughts, your fears, your limitations about wealth creation today. So one of the first tips in change is changing your thoughts. Now you say, oh yeah, Michael, that doesn't apply to me. Interestingly, once a year I get together with a group of already very, very successful property investors, business people and entrepreneurs at Wealth Retreat. And when we unpack this in detail, when we help them build the next five years of their life, design the next five years, give them strategies and new goals, in the security of this room of already other successful people where everyone's left out their Superman capes at the front door, so there's no egos, you'll find that even the most successful people are held back by limiting beliefs. They all We are all, not just them. We're all driving around with one foot on the accelerator and one on the brake. We're holding ourselves back. So I guess my question to you is, how do you think about money, about success and about prosperity? What do you say to yourself? What does that little voice in your head say? Now you may say, no, there isn't. What little voice? No, there isn't one. Yes, there is. It's the one that's saying that now. You see, for many of us, our thoughts revolve around, around fear, around scarcity, around limitation. The problem is what you focus on expands. So if you think about fear, about scarcity, about limitation, what do you achieve? Now remember what I said a moment ago. Your thoughts lead to your feelings. Your feelings lead to your actions. Your actions lead to your results. So what happens when you think about fear, scarcity, limitation? You see, money's a result. Wealth is a result. Your health is a result. Your results in all fields of your life are caused by you, by your actions. Now this occurs in your outer world. But as I'm trying to tell you, it's determined by your thoughts and your feelings in your inner world. For many Australians, their current mindset just won't let them get to the next level of wealth. Now, I know they blame the government and their job and the banks and their education or their parents. But it's not that. And it's not the lack of knowledge that they've got or they want. They think they need to know more. It's not what they don't know that prevents them from succeeding. As I said before, it's what they think they know that isn't correct that's their greatest obstacle. The way they think is their greatest obstacle. It's because of their programming, as I said, their wealth operating system, the way that they were programmed by things they heard, by things they saw, and the things they experienced when they were young. This is a type of thermostat that's usually set in our childhood and gives each of us our feelings and our beliefs about money and wealth. The problem is, for many Australians, the thermostat isn't set for wealth. Now, I often, well, when I used to run seminars, I used to say, hands up, anyone in the room has had multimillionaire parents. Now, if my kids weren't in the room, they probably didn't, there was hardly anyone to put up their hand. But sometimes there was one or two people and you'd say, hey, don't you think the conversation around their kitchen table was different to the conversation around your kitchen table, around my kitchen table when I grew up. So if you had wealthy, successful, financially fluent 
parents, then it's possible, it's likely that they've helped you become more financially fluent. But for most of us, our parents, despite being well-meaning, didn't give us the wealth operating system that we deserve. As I said, the problem for most Australians is the wealth thermostat isn't set for wealth. Many of us need to intentionally change our inner world our way of thinking. You need to start thinking about prosperity, about abundance and about success to enable us to attract those very things. First, we need to change the way we think about ourselves. We need to see ourselves as a wealthy person, as a wealth attractor, as a wealth creator. Now, before you turn off and say, Michael's into woo-woo stuff today, if I thought I could help you become more wealthy talking about the next property hotspot or, or, or what when the property market is going to boom or turn... That's what I'd be spending this session with you on. But I genuinely believe that despite having all the information about property, about wealth, about shares, about business, about finance, unless you increase your financial thermostat, you'll never get the wealth you, you desire. So please bear with me because this is the big, big difference. This is the reason why people go to podcasts and blogs and seminars and courses and only a small group ever become financially successful. This is the information other people don't tell us about. So you need to change. You need to change some of the ingrained thinking patterns. Now, I'm not belittling the success you already have. I don't know you personally. Thousands and thousands of people, tens of thousands of people download this podcast every episode. The thing, though, is that we're all driving around with one foot on the accelerator, as I said, and one on the brake. So you... Yes, even you will have some limiting beliefs. So you need to change some of those ingrained thinking patterns or overcome some of the negative ways that have developed as a result of your past experiences. The problem is many of us are scared of change. We find it hard to change, even though change is natural. In fact, the only constant in this world, the only thing you can absolutely count on is change itself. Often, because our subconscious mind's programmed to keep things the same and protect us, as that's the reason we have difficulty changing, as I said. Yet most successful people all share one critical characteristic. It's the trait of adaptability. They embrace change. They look for opportunities to expand and learn. Another common characteristic of successful people is that they've got a mentor and they belong to a mastermind group. They hang around other like-minded successful people. Now, a moment ago, I mentioned about Wealth Retreat. When I speak to people who go to join us at Wealth Retreat, one of the biggest challenges a lot of people have is isolation. They don't have many people to talk with about their wealth, about their business, about their success. Not people that understand what's going on. And your peer group does matter. It does make a difference. So you've got to hang around like-minded, successful people. If you continue to do the things you've always done, you're going to continue to get the results you've always achieved. So if you want to move forward in your wealth creation, you're going to have to hang around different people. You're going to have to have different mentors. I think it was Einstein who said the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again, but expecting a different result. You see, results will change when people change their way of thinking. If any of what I've just said to you makes an impression, you're going to realise if you want to get to another place in your life financially, then you're going to have to do something differently. And doing things differently requires thinking differently first. If you change your way of thinking, you'll change your actions. If you change your actions, you'll change your results. But the investors that I've seen stuck in the same financial position just didn't understand the importance of what I'm sharing with you today. However, as I've already explained, you, yes, you, you can have more because you can become more. You see, here's the other side of the coin. It says that unless you change, unless you change how you are, you're always going to have what you've got. Now, all this property stuff I share with you regularly is good. It's powerful. But on its own, it just won't do it. In order to have more, you've got to become more. The rich keep getting richer because they're programmed to, they're conditioned to, while most of us are boxed in by the boundaries of our thoughts. The message I'm trying to get to you is the wealth is a result. It's a result of your thoughts and your beliefs, which lead to actions. There's a common theme here, isn't there? So it's important for us to understand that we are all fully responsible for our own financial results. And again, I'm not belittling where you are at the moment. As I said, tens of thousands of people listen to this show every episode. Some are beginners, 
Some are already very, very successful investors. Many of them are clients of Metropole. Many of you are part of my mentorship program. I know a small group of you I've met personally and spent five days working closely with you at Wealth Retreat. So I understand that there's a whole range of people going to be listening to this. And those who have gotten to the next level understand that their future is their own responsibility. If things aren't working out for you the way you want them to, you need to stop taking the easy way out and blaming outside factors. It's not your boss's fault, nor is it the government's fault or the low interest rates or the high interest rates or the property market. And it's not the lack of information. There's so much information out there, not just what I give you, but what so many other people give you. You need to stop justifying where you are or where you're not financially at the moment. Most of what you have today, you've attracted by becoming the person you are today. If you want to change things in your life financially, you've got to change first. Everything you're doing right now, you're in the habit of doing. And everything you're not doing right now, you're in the habit of not doing. Now, if you've heard me speak on the topic of the psychology of success, you'll know I suggest you always get what your subconscious wants, not what you think you want. Now, I know you may be uncomfortable with me saying this, but the level of wealth you're experiencing at the moment is the level of wealth you're most comfortable with. You'll never create more wealth than you're unconsciously comfortable with. I know some of you are saying, Michael, that's not fair. I, You don't know. I've lost my job because of the economy at the moment or my properties aren't working because of this or that. You don't know about my education or I've got five kids and I can't afford to. No. The level of wealth you've created up to now is the level you're most comfortable with. Look, let me put it a different way. If you took all the money in the world and distributed it evenly, I believe in, I don't know, four or five years it'd be back in the same proportions again. Do you agree with that? What about all those people who win the lottery or get an inheritance? Um, and you've heard it before. They've lost it as they've squandered in four or five years' time. Now, I've actually never come across anyone who's won a major lottery, but I have come across a lot of people who've actually got a major inheritance and after a couple of years it's all gone. So what can you do about this? What can you do for you to get to the next level? If you'd like the second half of your life to be different from the first, what would you do with it? What could you do with it? Well, I've got a special invitation today that could help you completely make the rest of your life completely different. This may be the chance for you to live the rest of your life very differently from before. So please listen on, because I know that you get lots of messages from me, but this is an important one, because I'd like you to join me and work with me closely at Wealth Retreat 2024, which is going to be on the Gold Coast in June. Now, I know that's a long way away, but I'd suggest you plan for that. It's a long weekend for a lot of people, the second weekend of June, and it's going to help you move out of the rat race and get on the fast track, because at Wealth Retreat, we help shift your mindset and create lasting wealth. I, when I was looking back at uh, the, what we did last year at Wealth Retreat, I wanted to see if there were some common threads amongst the successful property investors and business people who'd come. And the first thing is they understood the importance of surrounding themselves with the right people. They realised that their networks make a big difference. Remember, you become the average of the five people you hang around with the most. So is your network, is your peer group going to get you to have those changes that I was talking about with you for the last 15 minutes or so? Now, I'm not saying dump your old friends, but you need to get around more people. There are a number of other reasons why some people are more successful and become richer. They have a different mindset. Wealthy individuals have got a growth mindset. They invest in their education. The rich are always learning and improving their skills. The wealthy have multiple streams of income and they take calculated risks. They realize that to create wealth, you need to take some risks. So they don't shy away from opportunities, but they do their homework and make informed decisions. And at Wealth Retreat, that's one of the areas we're going to focus on, teaching you different techniques and strategies to maintain your wealth and pass it on to future generations. I guess one of the other big factors that I've noticed in the people who come to Wealth Retreat is they've got a long-term perspective. They plan for their future and make decisions based on long-term goals rather than short-term gains. They're patient and they understand that building wealth takes time and persistence. You've heard me say it before with Warren Buffett saying, wealth is the transfer of money from the impatient 
to the patient. So if you want to set yourself goals, network with the right people, embrace change because I guess I hope today you've learned that you've got to change. If you want to hang around people who have already achieved what you want to achieve, then go to wealthretreat.com.au, find out about it. You can't book in, but register your interest. I speak to everyone who joins us to make sure it would be right for them and they're right for the Wealth Retreat community. So if you want to join the ranks of the wealthy or you want to become wealthier, I suggest you start by changing your mindset. Hey, I've just been spending time on that, haven't I? And get some mentors. Surround yourself with positive influences. Invest in your education. Never stop learning. Seek advice from those who've already achieved the type of success you're looking for. And then by taking these steps, you too can master the game of life and create wealth and abundance. So this is Shortcut. Just join us at Wealth Retreat in the middle of the year but register your interest at wealthretreat.com.au. We'll get back to you. Let's have a chat. Well, thanks for spending the last little while with me, and I hope you got some benefit from this show. If you did, and you know somebody else who'd also benefit, please tell them about the Michael Yardney podcast. There's a share button on every podcast app. On Apple Podcasts, there's three little buttons down the bottom, press it and share it, or just tell them about the Michael Yardney podcast. I hope you're going to be doing them a favour, and you'll definitely be doing me a favour and helping me in my quest to make as many people as possible financially literate. Now, there's ways of catching up with me between these shows. Just look for Michael Yardney on social media, or why not join my private Facebook group? Go to Facebook and look for the Property Update Facebook group. And I have a way of saying thank you to you for subscribing to this podcast. Go to podcastbonus.com.au. There'll be a link in the show notes, podcastbonus.com.au, where you can get a bunch of ebooks and reports. My way of saying thank you. And when you've got time, why not listen to some of the old podcasts? There's individual lessons in each of those that I think would be helpful for you. I'll be back again real soon. In the meantime, have a great week. Make it a great week. Thanks for listening to this episode of the Michael Yardney Podcast, which was brought to you by Metropole, who help their clients grow, protect and pass on their wealth through strategic property and wealth advice. If you like what you heard and don't already subscribe, you'll find us on iTunes or on your favorite Android app as the Michael Yardney Podcast. Watch out for our next show, which comes to you twice a week, and you'll learn some new ideas about property investment, success, and money in around 30 minutes. To get more of Michael's thoughts, go across to www.propertyupdate.com.au and sign up for his daily morning briefing and you'll hear from not only Michael, but a group of leading property success and money experts. And just a reminder that the information you heard in this show today is general educational advice and not specific investment advice, as we don't know your personal circumstances. If you're looking for specific advice, why not ask the team at Metropole to help you?